This is how an AP view x-ray is done wherein the x-rays enter the patient anteriorly and exit posteriorly to fall onto the film. In a PA view, the x-rays enter the patient posteriorly and exit anteriorly to fall onto the film. In a PA view, the hands are positioned in a way that the scapula moves out of the lung fields. The x-ray should be read as if the patient is facing you, with the right side of the x-ray of the patient towards your left. The first step in reading an x-ray is to identify the patient to whom this x-ray belongs. Identification may not be important in exams but is very important in clinical settings. Stories of one patient being treated for another's x-ray are not unheard of. The next step is to technically evaluate the chest x-ray. It involves looking at the type of film, whether it is an AP, PA or a lateral film, looking at the position of the patient, checking whether it is a well-inspired film, is there any rotation and whether the exposure is adequate or not. I have tried to create a mnemonic which will help you remember these technical aspects that is tire. T for type of film, I for inspiration, R for rotation and E for exposure. Structures that are seen on an x-ray can be divided into things that appear white and things that appear black. Among the white things you have the soft tissue, the arteries especially the pulmonary artery, the diaphragm, the cardiac sillhout as well as any shift in the position of the heart, bone and the hilum. The black structures seen on an x-ray are the lungs and the airway. To help you remember these structures, I have created a mnemonic and the mnemonic is smoking and drinking has been cutting away lives. S for soft tissue, A for artery, D for diaphragm, H for hilum, B for bone, C for cardiac, A for airway and L for lungs. Now begin by correctly identifying the patient to whom the film belongs. Next look at the type of film, whether it is an AP, PA or a lateral film and the position of the patient. The AP film is usually done in infants or small children who will not usually cooperate for a PA film. And since they are usually restrained in a supine position, you will see their hands going up in the film. PA film on the other hand are done in erect position. They can further be identified by the position of the hands which go down instead of going up. The lateral film can be easily identified. Although identification of position can be difficult at times, presence of any air fluid level can tell that this is an erect position. This air fluid level may be in stomach or may be any lesion in the parenchyma or the pleura. Upward projecting upper limbs may indicate a supine position. As you can see in this video, the hand as it goes away from the source of light or x-ray towards the film, its shadow gets sharper and smaller. In an AP film, the posterior bony structures like the posterior rib and scapula may be more prominent than the clavicle and the heart which is an anterior structure and away from the film looks larger in an AP view than a PA view. But in the x-ray of a small child, this difference may not always be easily elicitable. After the type of the film, now we have to see whether this is a well inspired film or not. For this we can count the posterior ribs on the right side. Usually, it is the ninth posterior rib which is seen intersecting the diaphragm. Let us count the posterior ribs in this particular x-ray. So, the eighth posterior rib is intersecting the diaphragm. So, therefore, it is an expiratory film. If you compare this with a well-inspired film of the same child, you will appreciate that the heart looks larger than normal and hyla are more prominent in an expiratory film. So, in an expiratory film, you can you are likely to wrongly read cardiomegaly and prominent hyalur markings. Next, let us look at the rotation. In this particular x-ray, you can see the vertebral column lies almost in the center of the chest. If you look at the cardiac placement, if you draw a line through the middle of the vertebral column, the one third of the heart is towards the right of it and two thirds of it is towards the left of it. I have also marked the anterior ends of the ribs on both sides and if I draw a line through them, you will realize that the anterior ends of the ribs on both the sides are almost equal. If I draw a line through the center of the vertebral column, you will see that the medial ends of the clavicles on both sides are almost equidistant from it. You can also see that the medial ends of the clavicle are equidistant from the spinous process of the vertebra. Therefore, it is an unrotated film. Now, let us have a look at this x-ray. The vertebral column in this x-ray is shifted 
towards right. Heart is shifted towards left. If you look at the anterior ribs, they are shorter on the left side as compared to that on the right side. Now let us have a look at this picture. The yellow box is the x-ray machine sending out these yellow rays. The green box is the vertebral column and the green triangle is the spinous process. The oval red structure here represents the heart. The semicircular blue lines represent the ribs. As you can see, the vertebral column is sending a projection in the midline of the film. The red heart is sending a projection which is almost one third on the right and two third on the left of the midline. The blue boxes labeled A and B, they represent the length of the anterior ribs which is almost equal on both the sides. Let us see what happens if this patient turns towards his left. The heart being an anterior structure seems to have shifted towards left. The vertebral column being a posterior structure seems to have shifted towards right. And now if you compare the enter anterior ends of the ribs, the anterior ends of the ribs on the left side are smaller than on the right side. Now let us have a relook at the previously seen x-ray. Since the vertebral column is shifted towards right, the heart seems to have shifted towards left and the anterior ribs on the left side are smaller, this patient is rotated towards left side. Now let us have a look at the x-ray of the same child without rotation. Let us now see how to assess the exposure or penetration of the film. In an appropriately exposed film, the intervertebral discs are just visible through the heart. The word here is just because if they are not seen at all, it is an underexposed or an underpenetrated film and if they are too well seen, it is an overexposed or an overpenetrated film. Let us see examples of what an inappropriate exposure can do. A patient was started on antituberculous therapy based on this x-ray and he presents two months later with this x-ray. If we do not compare the exposure of these two films, the patient seems to have radiologically improved. But if you compare the exposure of the films, the second film is relatively overpenetrated or overexposed and thereby the difference. Let us now compare the two x-rays of another child. Because compared to this first x-ray, the second x-ray is underexposed, you may overread the hyalur or parenchymal shadows. Let us now begin description of an x-ray. And for completion of assessment, we will use the mnemonic, smoking and drinking has been cutting away lives. But before that, let us have a look at some of the important structures seen in an X-ray. The superior vena cava, the tracheal shadow, aortic knuckle, pulmonary artery, the left cardiophrenic angle, the left costophrenic angle, the gastric fundus showing air fluid level, the right cardiophrenic angle and the right costophrenic angle. Now let us first look at the soft tissue. There is an opacity in the right axilla and it is an axillary lymph node. This child had a foreign body stuck in the right main bronchus with air trapping on the right side and what you can see in soft tissue is subcutaneous emphysema. Now let us have a look at the pulmonary artery. This x-ray is of a child with tetralogy of fellows and you can see a concavity in the region of pulmonary artery. And this x-ray belongs to a child with VST with a prominent pulmonary artery. Let us now have a look at the diaphragm. This is a two and a half year old child with flat diaphragms indicating hyperinflation. This is a six year old child with mediastinal shift towards right side. On the left side, the diaphragm is not seen and there are air containing pockets in the left lung field. This is left sided congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Let us now look at the hilum. This is a 13 year old female with a right hilar lymph node. This is a 3 year old male with a right paratracheal lymph node. This is a treated case of tuberculosis with calcifications. Let us now look at the bony structures. This x-ray is rotated towards right and you can see the anterior ends of the ribs on the right side they are widened due to rickets and they can be mistaken for pulmonary shadows. This radiograph shows vertebral anomalies. Now let us look at the cardiac sillhout. In an AP or a PA view, the left atrium lies here and the auricle is placed here. This is the position of right atrium and the left ventricle is placed here. This is the position of right ventricle. As you can see, in an AP or a PA view, the right heart border is formed by the right atrium 
and the left heart border is predominantly formed by the left ventricle. A small upper part of the left heart border is formed by the auricle. Let us have a look at the cardiac shift. This radiograph shows diffuse homogeneous opacity on the left side with a cardiac shift towards right side. In this radiograph, there is a homogeneous opacity on the right side and a mediastinal shift towards left side. This radiograph shows a mediastinal shift towards left side. For measuring cardiothoracic ratio, let us first draw a line through the center of the vertebral column. First choose the highest point on the diaphragm and since the right sided diaphragm is higher because of the liver, the point lies in the right sided diaphragm. Through this point, draw a line perpendicular to the vertebral column covering the intrathoracic diameter. Mark the maximum dimensions of the heart on either side of the central line going through the vertebral column. The cardiothoracic ratio is given by the formula A plus B divided by C. Let us now look at the airway. This radiograph shows a shift of the airway towards right side and a compression of the left main bronchus. This radiograph shows airway bulging forward. The dye study revealed a esophageal stricture with esophageal dilatation proximal to that, pushing the airway anteriorly. Let us now look at the lung parenchyma. This radiograph shows homogeneous opacity in the right upper and middle zone with not significant mediastinal shifts, likely to represent a consolidation. This is a typical X-ray of right-sided pleural effusion. These are miliary shadows in lung parenchyma. The causes of miliary mottling of lung fields are miliary tuberculosis, bronchopneumonia due to tuberculosis, bacterial, viral or fungal causes, pulmonary edema, interstitial lung disease, hemosiderosis and sarcoidosis. This radiograph shows homogeneous opacities on the right side with mediastinal shift towards the same side. This is an infant who presented with a foreign body in the right main bronchus. This radiograph shows a homogeneous opacity in the right lower zone with a mediastinal shift to the same side. The upper border of the opacity is sharply defined with concave contour. The diaphragm cannot be differentiated in this opacity. It is a right lower lobe collapse. While describing a lung lesion, describe the side of the lesion whether it is on the right side or on the left side then the location of lesion here for the sake of simplicity i'll talk about zones which i'll describe later comment on the shape of the lesion and then the texture of the lesion whether it is homogeneous lesion or a non-homogeneous lesion then comment on the size of lesion and lastly whether it is a radiolucent or a black lesion or white that is a radio opaque lesion the lungs can be divided into three zones the upper zone extends from the apex to a line drawn through the lower border of the anterior ends of the second costal cartilage. The middle zone extends from this line to the one drawn through the lower border of the fourth costal cartilage. The lower zone extends below this line. Now suppose we have a radio opaque or a white lesion on the lungs. How to approach this lesion, whether it is a consolidation or a collapse or an effusion? First of all, look at the mediastinal shift which will be indicated by the position of the heart and the airway and see whether the shift is towards the side of the lesion or opposite to it. Now look at the cardiophrenic angle whether it is blunted or not. Now let us look at this table. Although this is an oversimplified approach but it can still help. If there is no mediastinal shift and the CP angle is not blunted, it is likely to be a consolidation. If there is no mediastinal shift but the CP angle is blunted, Either it could be mild diffusion or a mild diffusion with lung consolidation or a significant diffusion with lung collapse. If there is shift to the same side of the lesion and the CP angle is not blunted, it is likely to be a collapse or an atelectasis. If the shift is to the same side but the CP angle is blunted, it could be a pleural effusion with lung collapse. If the shift is to the opposite side and CP angle is not blunted, it is likely to be a mass or a loculated effusion. If the shift is to the opposite side but the CP angle is blunted, it is likely to be an effusion with or without consolidation. This is a right-sided homogeneous opacity occupying the whole of the right hemithorax. The CP angle in this case is not blunted and there is a mediastinal shift 
towards the opposite side. This is most likely a tumor. Sometimes such massive masses are difficult to differentiate from massive effusions. This is a similar looking x-ray but this is massive effusion. If you look carefully you can see the difference in the CP angle of both these x-rays. These are two examples of cavitary lesions in the right middle zone. The causes of pulmonary cavities are lung abscesses, bronchiectasis, tubercular cavities and infected emphysematous bulla. So how to approach a black lesion? First of all, look at the mediastinal shift by looking at the heart and at the airway. Now whether this black lesion is unilateral or bilateral, look for the lung markings, whether you can see a collapsed lung or not, whether it is one complete lung involvement or only a lobe involvement and whether the airway and the hilum are normal or not. In this x-ray, you can see that the whole of the right side is lucent and there is right-sided hyperinflation. The mediastinal shift is to the left side and a collapsed lung margin can be seen. This is an example of right-sided tension pneumothorax. This radiograph shows hyperinflation on the left side and a mediastinal shift to the right side. But on the hyperinflated sides, lung markings can be seen and there is no collapsed lung. This is air entrapped on the left side. This was foreign body and the left main bronchus. This is congenital cyst adenoid malformation in the right upper and middle zone. Now let us have a word about the lateral views. The anterior side in a lateral view is identified by the sternum and the posterior side by the vertebral bodies. The heart lies in the antero inferior position. The retrosternal that is above the heart and the retrocardiac region are lucent area that is dark or black areas and these two areas are almost equally black. Any difference between the two may indicate a lesion. Hyler adenopathy may sometimes be better seen in this position. Visualized vertebra should also be examined in this position. The lowest vertebrae usually are the most lucent becoming whiter as you go up in a smooth gradation. Now let us have a look at the cardiac sillhout in the lateral film. This is the position of the heart. This is the left ventricle. This is the left atrium. This is the right ventricle. And this is the right atrium. Now look at some miscellaneous x-rays. This x-ray abdomen shows gas in the abdomen. Indicative of intestinal perforation. In this particular x-ray also, there is gas under the diaphragm. And when, when we take a closer look, you can see that there is a well-defined diaphragm and air below it. This is an x-ray of rickets without healing and you can see the loss of zone of provisional calcification seen as increased distance between epiphysis and metaphysis. The metaphysis shows fraying, splaying and cupping and the density of bone is also decreased. This can lead to bending of bones and fractures. This radiograph shows rickets with a healing line. And the signs of healing are a dense white line of provisional calcification at the ends of long bones, decreased width between the epiphysis and metaphysis and the bone density is also increased. The causes of white line at ends of bones in a x-ray are healing rickets, scurvy, congenital syphilis and lead poisoning.